Um, so this is a joint work uh, with uh, Marjong University of Science and Technology, Chinese University of Hong Kong, and Huawei. Um, we know that erasure coding has been widely deployed in practice, um, and there are many ways to construct erasure code. And uh, the most common uh, and the most popular one is resolvement coding. And the idea is uh, we can configure two parameters, n and k, where we encode uh, k encoded blocks into encoded blocks. Uh, uh, the redundancy is n over k. And each coded block could be expressed as a linear combination of any k blocks under Gower field arithmetic. And there's a nice property about resolvement coding is uh, MDS property, which means that any k of n coded blocks can recover all the original data, while the redundancy overhead, n over k, is the minimum. So for example, we can construct 1410 RS code, uh, which has been deployed in Facebook. And we can tolerate any four block failures with only redundancy overhead 1.4 times. While if you use replication, you need uh, five copies. The redundancy is five times in order to tolerate any four block failures. Although we Solomon coding is very effi uh, storage efficient, uh, the drawback is it has high repair penalty and hence incur a uh, high performance overhead. The repair penalty comes in two parts. Uh, the first part is the repair bandwidth, which means the amount of traffic transferred over the network. So if we want to re uh, restore a single lost block, we need to collect k blocks in order to recover this lost block. So there will be amplification in terms of the amount of traffic. And the other aspect would be maximum repair load, which means the maximum amount of traffic that a node send or receive among all the nodes. So let's take a look at an example of the 4.2 RS code where the block size is 256 megabyte, which is the default setting in Facebook. So um, let's say N0 fails and we need to recover the lost block B0. Um, so this new node N0 needs to collect two blocks from the other available nodes. So the amount of repair bandwidth will be 512 megabytes. And also we see that N0 is the bottleneck. It receives uh, two blocks. Uh, so the uh, maximum repair load in this case is also 512 megabytes. Um, in the literature, there are many words to address this repair penalty issue in erasure coding. So uh, to reduce the repair bandwidth, one line of work is to propose new erasure code construction and uh, minimum storage regenerating codes are the erasure codes that can be proved to minimize the repair bandwidth while satisfying the MDS property, just like uh, RS code. And the core idea behind MSR code is the subpacketization feature, which divides a block into W subblocks in the construction. So when you repair a lost block, you only need to collect a subset of subblocks to do the reconstruction. Um, some examples of MSR code constructions would be uh, butterfly codes, but they require N to be uh, the same as K plus two. So the state of the art MSR code construction would be click codes, uh, which can be proved to minimize not only the repair bandwidth, but also the IO, which means that the amount of IO to local storage for repair is the same as the minimum repair bandwidth. And it can also be supporting general parameters N and K provided that K is less than N. So for example, for the uh, 4 to click code, um, let's say N0 fails, uh, what we do is uh, we collect two subblocks from each of the remaining three available nodes. So in this case, the repair bandwidth will be 384 megabyte. Um, N0 here is still the bottleneck, so um, it has the maximum repair load, which is the same as uh, 384 megabytes. Now to reduce the repair, maximum repair load, uh, one way to do this is to decompose and parallelize, parallelize the repair operations across all the available nodes. So uh, one step of the artwork is repair pipelining. The idea is to divide the block into slices and repair the slices in parallel. So for example, in here, um, N1 will send the partial linear combinations for the first slice to N2, and N2 will reconstruct the slice uh, and send the result to N0. And while N2 sends the result to N0, N1 can start the repair for the second slice and send the partial linear combinations to N2. Uh, so in this case, these transmissions could be done in parallel and we can uh, balance the load across all the nodes. We can show that uh, the maximum repair load is 256 megabyte because uh, each node only need to send or receive one block. However, the repair bandwidth is still 512 megabyte because we still need to collect K blocks to do the reconstruction. 
So the natural question to ask is, can we apply repair pipelining for MSR codes? Unfortunately, the answer is no, uh, because repair pipelining relies on the additive associativity property of RS code so that we can decompose the uh, linear combinations and send partial linear combinations to do the uh, repair. For the repair of the MSR codes, it needs to collect enough subplots in order to solve the system of linear equations, so it, it cannot be easily decomposed. Now, it doesn't mean that we cannot parallelize uh, repair of the MSR code. Our observation is that we actually can exploit the sub nature of MSR codes because we find that the repair of a subblock only requires a subset of available subblocks. So what we can do is we can distribute the repair of uh, subblocks across multiple nodes for load balancing. So uh, let me show you an example in here. Let's see how we can parallelize the repair for clay codes. So what we can do is um, N N3 can send uh, a slice B30 to N2. N2 can reconstruct the slice B00 and also um, compute the other uh, intermediate subblocks in here and then send the intermediate subblocks to N1 and finally N0 collect the subblocks for all the other nodes in order to reconstruct the remaining subblocks. So in this case, we find that the repair bandwidth is uh, 448 megabyte, which is less than the case of uh, RS code, while the maximum repair load in here is 320 megabyte, which is less than the centralized repair for the clay code. Now, the thing is, um, for this particular case, uh, how do we actually get the answer? How do we systematically solve the uh, solution for general uh, parallel uh, repair for the uh, MSR code. So um, this is the question we want to answer. Uh, how do we model the trade-off and design a parallel repair approach for general MSR code? So here comes our contributions. Uh, we propose parallel RC, parallel RC, a parallel repair framework for the MSR codes. And uh, we model the re parallel repair problem as a back coloring problem to show the trade-off between repair bandwidth and maximum repair load. We also identify the point called MLP, which minimizes the repair bandwidth given the minimum maximum repair load. We propose a heuristic to find the approximate MLP efficiently. And finally, we prototype uh, parallel LC on Hadoop HDFS and evaluate this on Alibaba Cloud. So to begin with, we need to model the repair operations for the uh, MSR code. So in here, we propose an abstraction called PEC DAC, which is an erasure coding based director a secret graph that defines a parallel repair operation. So this ab abstraction uh, is built on our previous work EC DAC. So the idea is in this graph, uh, we model each vertex VI, uh, VL uh, to represent a sub block or an intermediate subblock, and we draw an edge from uh, VL1 to VL2 if the subblock VL1 is one of the inputs for the linear combination that forms the subblock VL2. And the main extension that we make to this uh, PEC deck is to color each vertex. So the color for each vertex represents the node that will compute and store the subblock. Let me give you an example of a PEC DAC to repair P0 in the 4.2 clay code. So uh, this EC DAC basically is formulated based on the repair operation for the clay codes. And what you can see in here is if we draw the edge uh, between two nodes of different colors, it means that we will need to transmit the subblock from one node to another node. Um, so the details could be found in the paper. Now, based on this uh, colored PEC DAC, what we can do is we can construct this traffic table T that records the repair load for each node for a different repair operation. And this table has two columns, T dot in, which represents the number of incoming subblocks, and T dot out represents the number of outgoing subblocks. So the sum of uh, one of the columns is actually the repair bandwidth, which is seven subblocks in this case, and uh, the maximum entry uh, which is the maximum repair load, which is uh, five uh, subblocks in this case. So in this 
Based on this abstraction, we consider all the possible color combinations and try to show the spectrum of the trade-off between repair bandwidth and maximum repair load. So here we show two examples of the uh, uh, MSR codes. Uh, one is Clico and the other one is Butterfly code. And in here, we are particularly interested in one of the uh, one of the points which we call the MLP, mean mass repair load point. This is the point that minimizes the um, repair bandwidth given the minimum maximum repair load. So our idea is we want to minimize the repair maximum repair load so that uh, we can uh, do better load balancing. But at the same time, among all the possible uh, uh, mean mass repair loads, we try to find a point that minimizes the repair bandwidth. How to find this MLP is not a easy problem. In fact, um, if you do this by brute force, uh, which is our case in here, is computationally infeasible. So here we propose a heuristic to, to search for the meaningful color combinations for a PEC deck. And the idea is uh, we start with a PEC deck and examine each of the neighbors by neighbor. What I mean is one vertex of a different color from the uh, selected PEC tag. And do, during our examination, we try to prune the suboptimal solutions. And the intuition is quite similar to, we try to search on the Pareto uh, frontier and try to print the uh, dominated solutions. So let me show the idea of this heuristic. First of all, we initialize the uh, two pools. Uh, one is called the unsearched pool and the other one is the candidate pool. And we start with a random PEC deck and put this in both pools. And so we search for the neighbors of this uh, PEC deck uh, and from this unsearched pool. Um, so, and then we compare each neighbor PEC deck with those in the candidate pool. So when we do the comparison, we actually identify four cases that allow us to decide whether we should add this to the candidate pool or prune this out. So for the first case, uh, we realize that some of these solutions, which are the blue points in here, are actually worse than the candidate solution in the candidate pool. So in this case, we don't need to consider them. We can prune them. The second case is um, the green points here, which have the least repair bandwidth or the least maximum repair load compared with the solutions in the candidate pool. So we think that they will be the candidates and we add them to the candidate pool. The third case is the yellow point, which is lying between the solutions in the candidate pool. Um, our, our justification is that it's possible that uh, the na it, its neighbors could be better than the candidates in the candidate pool. So we also add this to the uh, candidate pool. Finally, uh, we identify some solutions that would be better than the uh, solutions in the candidate pool, which are the red points in here. So what we do is we prune the worst candidate solutions and add those uh, red solutions to the candidate pool. Finally, uh, we add those candidate solutions back to the unsearched pool and start to search their neighbors in the next iteration. So we repeat steps two and step three until the unsearched unsearch pool is empty and we try to uh, return the point with the least maximum repair load in the candidate pool and we call this uh, approximate MLP. So we implement this idea and prototype this on para RC. Um, one point I want to make is um, the approximate MLP is pre-computed offline for each of the possible failure combinations. So we consider all possible single failure cases and we compute uh, pre-compute the approximate MLP. As long as N and K are not too large, uh, this is uh, doable in practice. So here are some results. Uh, uh, first of all, we try to see if this approximate MLP uh, gives us better trade-off between the repair bandwidth and maximum repair load. And, uh, and we show that, yes, this is the case. Uh, we can actually show that uh, it has less repair bandwidth than uh, the RS code, uh, the repair pipeline here. And also, it can reduce the maximum repair load uh, compared to the clay code. And also, he our heuristic uh, has feasible running time. You may see that it still takes about two days, more than two days to run uh, the cases for NK equals to 1612. But again, as I said, uh, this could be pre-computed offline and you only do it once and then you can store the results in the uh, system and, and then you, you're all good.
And we also evaluate the performance of Power RC on Alibaba Cloud. Um, what we found is uh, compared with decentralized repair of RS code, the parallel version of RS code repair pipelining and also centralized repair for clay codes or butterfly codes, we can reduce the degraded read time and also full new recovery time uh, by up to 76% in this case. So here comes our conclusions. Um, parallel RC is a parallel repair framework for MSR codes. Try to explore the subpacketization nature and balances the trade-off trade between repair bandwidth and maximum repair load. Uh, there's still a lot of ongoing work we need to do. Uh, one thing is about the theoretical analysis of the trade-off. So far, we just do this by enumeration uh, of all the possibilities, but it's then the elegant way to um, show the trade-off in an efficient way. And also, um, uh, so far, we only focus on the single stripe and try to parallelize the operation for a single stripe. Can we combine this with the inter-stripe parallelism to further boost the performance? And finally, uh, we need to think about the design for small blocks and also wide stripes with March and K. Um, so the system is open sourced and uh, you can download, play around this and verify our results in the paper. So that's all for, our, uh, for my presentation. I'm happy to take questions and comments. Thank you.